Uh, how's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Saltwater Edge YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today, I've got, if you saw the previous Boogie Minnow video and you liked it, then you will probably like this one. Um, I want to talk a little bit about fly colors, colors in general when it comes to fishing. Um, I know people have various opinions on it. Um, my initial opinion is that uh, I know a, a lot of people say it doesn't matter too much, and that's that's kind of true. Um, but it definitely, I don't think the specific color matters as much as variety matters. So um, I do surf, I surf cast boat fish and fly fish. So I carry a lot of different colored plugs um, or lures mainly to have that variety. Um, in some cases, maybe if mackerel are around, um, they've got pretty noticeable stripes. Um, uh, herring, bunker maybe. Um, I just want a variety. The fish, they'll get used to seeing the same thing and then you have to switch it up. Um, and usually that can trigger a bite. So if a bite slows down and I switch to a different colored plug, um, usually the bite picks back up again. Um, so I do think color plays a part. Do I care if it is, you know, a perfect weak fish pattern? Maybe not. Um, but I, I do think it plays a role. So I don't, I don't write off color, you know, I don't say it just doesn't matter and get bone and black colored plugs. And um, I do think it plays a role more so for variety's sake. Um, in some cases, definitely specifics help, but um, more so for variety's sake. Um, and plus, it's kind of nice to just, you know, loosen up and have a good time and have some fun colors. So uh, that's what we're doing a little bit today. Um, especially when it comes to fly tying, uh, part of the fun in tying is to try and match the bait. Um, there's sort of an art side to it that is enjoyable. Um, I try not to tie like a robot with just light colored flies and dark colored flies. So um, today we're going through some boogie minnow style patterns. We're going to switch up the colors a little bit um, to some bunker for when the bunker are around, the peanuts are around. We're going to do some herring because the herring are starting to show up. Um, so we're going to jump on the heron train and then mullet uh, from that mullet. Those mullets show up in the fall. Um, as all, you know, last uh, last fall and spring, um, I'm using the boogie minnow in white a lot. Um, it's one of my favorite flies, obviously. Um, but uh, sometimes the bite, you know, you could see the fish everywhere. It died down a little bit. So I switched to, I'd ha I had a boogie minnow with some um, yellow marabou in it and some gold ripple ice. I switched to that. Um, and my, my catch rate picked back up again. So got me thinking a little bit. Maybe I should um, have some more variety in my fly box. Um, so that's what we're going to dive into a little bit today uh, and have some fun. Um, yeah, so we're going to start with the, the bunker color. Um, it's kind of easier if I'll just uh, go through the materials as I add them onto the fly. Um, just like the, you know, if you want, you don't have to go back and watch the, the first boogie minnow, though I do recommend it. It's a great fly. It's a, it's a fun time. Um, and so I've got the Mustad, um, heritage hook in the vice is a two watt size. You can use, you know, any of your favorite hooks. Um, I like this one cause it's got the wider gap, um, you just don't, I don't think you want a short shank or a long, like a double X shank. Uh, they tend to be too short or too long. So just your standard shank length, but uh, any hook, any hook you like to tie with is, is good. Um, I'm going to take my longest strand of bucktail here. You, know, you want to start with your longest. This is where you're going to utilize that, that long bucktail you have sitting around. Take a healthy-ish clump of that bucktail. This is going to let you know what your longest longest length of the fly is. So however big you want your bunker fly or your peanut bunker fly, um, it's going to be dictated by this, this bucktail here. Uh, once you've got that in, you're going to need four um, saddle, saddle feathers, some four white saddle feathers. Uh, strung Chinese works well too. If you have, you know, a bunch of white capes, so you can pluck some off of there. Um, about as long as the bucktail, maybe a little bit longer. Going to need four of them, uh, two for each side. 
CA. That is four right there. Perfect. I like to leave a little bit of the fuzz on there, a little bit of a party in the back for the fly. So I try to cut. Now, generally, you want to, uh, I think you can, I think the camera will pick this up, but the stem is thick here and then it starts to get thinner. Right about here is a good transition point. I mean, you've still got plenty of fuzz left over. So I'm going to cut it right at that transition. I'm going to do that for all the all the feathers. And tie it flat against the shank on one side, sort of like you would with a deceiver. Repeat that process with the second one. Good, good. Uh, that white, that fuzz, extra fuzz also helps if you tie flat wings. Um, you may have heard of the, the pillow method. Um, it sort of acts as a pillow in itself on the feather there to cinch down on that stem and keep the feathers from rotating on you. Thank you. I'm going to do the same thing with the stems on the next two feathers. And again, we're just tying them flat against the hook shank, a couple loose wraps, and then tighten it down. Then we're going to take some flash, and for the bunker, I like some gold flash, and I'm always using a few strands of red flash for that injury or stressed bait fish um, look. And then the gold for bunker, um, it's just one of those, one of those colors for oily, oily fish, oily bait fish. And I'm using uh, this uni thread in the six aught size. If you tend to break your thread, um, you probably want to use the three aught size. I just like this thread because it's very grippy. Um, it's a round thread. I don't find that it slides off my bucktail often. Um, it just really grips the material and makes tying a little bit easier. Uh, so that was two strands of the red flash that I folded them over the thread. And I'll show that again uh, when I do the gold here. I'm going to take three strands of the gold and just catch the thread with them like so. and then a couple wraps, and they are locked in place. Next, we're going to take our ostrich plume, and you want a uh, long ostrich hurl. Uh, you want it to go about as far as the feather, probably a little bit shorter, but uh, most of it is going to wind up being shorter anyway. So just your longest hurl helps in the overall shape of the fly. And this is a key ingredient of the fly. It adds a ton of movement in the water. Yeah. Lay that over the top and then secure it down. And then... then I'm gonna take some yellow marabou. You can also use shorter yellow ostrich if you have it, but marabou works just fine. Just want something a little shorter and in yellow uh, for the bunker. Take a healthy, healthy clump of that yellow marabou. Lay it in over the ostrich. And then secure it down. And I'm going to work my thread forward a couple wraps right about there uh, for the first tie-in point of our white bucktail. Uh, this is going to be the second long, longest section of bucktail. Um, so take a nice long, just a little bit shorter um, than the feathers. It'll end about, ideally about here. Just going to Cut a small clump, pull the shorter fibers out. Lay that down over the top. And then I'm going to press down on my fingers and kind of veil it around the top portion of the hook shank. 
so sort of the top and the sides, a couple of loose wraps of thread, kind of make sure it's doing what I want before I lock it down, and then tighten those wraps and secure that in place. And then the same exact process for the bottom here, or the belly. Uh, but on the belly, I try to kind of split the hairs evenly and go around the shank of the hook there. So even on both sides, get a couple of loose wraps Move that hair where you want it. And then lock it down. Then we're going to repeat those steps. I've moved my thread a couple wraps forward again. I'm going to do another tie in a bucktail. Um, and make it a little bit shorter than the section we just tied in. So I'm going to trim the butt ends a little bit shorter this time. Or if you have short white bucktail, you can just use that. Then same process, I'm kind of spreading it around a couple loose wraps. Make sure it's veiling pretty evenly. And then get my belly section. And again, going a little shorter. Spreading it evenly around the hook shank or the bend of the hook. Couple loose wraps. At. And once the hair is where you want it, then you can lock it on down again. Just kind of cleaning up the head now before I move on to the next step. Uh, we're going to take some ripple ice fiber in what they call this light olive, more of a gold. Um, pull out a little clump of it and pull those fibers so that they're all running long, is unbunched up. I'm going to tie it down in the middle here and starting with a couple loose wraps and then spreading it like the bucktail around the top third of the of the fly, sort of down the sides a little bit. And then we're going to double over that front section, do the same thing, spread them out a little bit. Next, we're going to take some olive bucktail. It's going to darken the back of that peanut bunker, the sort of dark olive or light olive back it has. Start to transition the back of this fly a little bit darker. And you want to keep this bucktail, this olive bucktail, about the same length as the previous section we just tied in. And I'm not going to spread this around too much because it's just for the back of the fly. Just a couple loose wraps, then locking it down. And for our final back transition, using the ripple ice fiber in olives. Pull out a small clump again, straighten it all out. And this time I'm going to fold it in half now, 
So I have a nice tie-in point like that. Lay it over the back of the fly. Yeah. And then just secure it down over the back. Once that is in place, I'm going to take this fin raccoon. Um, it's a lot like Arctic fox or craft fur, um, but I like it a little bit more. It's a little bit more uh, breathable in the water. I like the guard hairs and it gives you a nice natural taper. Um, and this is some nice quality hair. Um, and we're gonna end up veiling it, you know, a small clump of it about that much over the fly. And I'm gonna cut it a little bit short. So similar with the bucktail, I'm gonna place it over the top and then start to sort of pinch it and press on it till it works its way around the hook. So again, it's kind of veiled around there. Then secure that down. And this adds some more movement to the fly um, and a good body to the fly. Just kind of clean up the head. And now we're going to move on to creating the head for this. Um, so I take this yellow uh, Dura flash tubing. I'm leaving the spine of it so where that thicker yellow thread comes through uh, top and bottom. I'm just going to leave that top and bottom on the fly. I'm going to slide it over the eye of the hook a little bit past the thread. And we'll grab your thread and about eight or ten um, tighter wraps here. You really want to secure this um, Dura flash tubing down. I think I already said it, but this is the yellow color for the bunker. Good enough. Get everything out of your way here. Uh, it's pretty hard to whip finish around all this, so I just take some UV, add a couple drops around the thread, kind of spread it around. Uh, you don't want it to go in front of the thread because that might mess you up a little bit when you go to build this head by pushing it back. So I keep it on this side of the thread, um, and then I hit it with the light. Nope. And you can get your thread out of the way. And then you're just pushing it back and doubling it over itself. And that is about the size of the head I want there. So I'm going to pull it forward a little bit to account for the eye of the hook there. If I cut it here, I would end up having to push it back further. So I'm gonna pull it forward a little. Snip it right there. Then I'm just gonna take my cauterizing pen or you can use a lighter and just burn the ends there a little bit. It's gonna to help to tie it in and uh, keep it from fraying. So I'm gonna pull that back. and restart the thread around the eye of the hook there. And then just catch all the fibers of this tubing and secure it, secure that head down. Once that head is cleaned up nice, secured down with the thread, uh, you can whip finish it or just put some UV on. We're going to UV the rest in a minute. Uh, 
I'm just going to hit that with the light, get the thread out of the way. And then you can use whatever eyes you like to use. Um, I like the 3D hairline um, adhesive eyes. This is the super pearl color. Just kind of get them placed on there. I'm trying to make sure they're even. It's pretty good. And I'm going to take my UV and try to secure those eyes down, sort of coat the rest of the thread as well as the eyes. That one wants to come with me. Just make sure everything has that UV on it. It's going to make for a very durable uh, head of the fly. I'm just evening out that UV, getting that pesky little eye to stay there. I just I just make sure that UV is evened out around the head. And then hitting it with the UV light. And there we go. There is your peanut bunker. Um, thanks for watching. If you did like the video, uh, make sure to hit that like button. And if you aren't subscribed already, uh, do subscribe. We've got some fun stuff coming up. Um, it also helps the shop out a bunch when you do that. It's quick and easy. Um, if you had any questions or comments, put them down below. Um, and we'll see you in the next one.